It's Thursday, 10 o'clock in the morning, and we're always excited and grateful. And we are blessed with nature. We're blessed with our trees, our plants, with the food we grow. We're blessed with having people who share the advocacies that we've been espousing and legislating and doing policies for the past few decades. And we're grateful that during these difficult times of the pandemic, we have a platform where people come together in commonality, in shared values and advocacies and actual action on the ground so that they share with you, with us, with me, with all of us, how we can better uh, improve things around us, how, we can we, how can we better adapt, adopt and adapt to our environment, to our surroundings, uh, to the crisis facing us. But even beyond COVID-19, beyond the pandemic, we must embrace the new norm. In fact, the new norm must be a better normal. And that's the reason why we passed uh, the bill called the Better Normal Bill in the House of Representatives. And we decided to explain and operationalize what the better normal means to each and every one of us, to the rural folk, to the urban dweller, to the millennial, to the senior citizen, to the office worker, to the government servant leaders. And so today, it's a very, very special topic because as you all know, I'm an amateur farmer, weekend farmer. Um, uh, when I was reading about permaculture many years ago, I realized that perhaps what I'm doing is permaculture without even having taken the course or even meeting the experts we have here. But I'm so glad that we have all the experts. But before that, I'd like to thank the Climate Change Commission uh, for launching this online platform where we've had many subjects on sustainable mobility and fighting for the rights of those who don't have vehicles and uh, claiming part of our commons or the street. We're grateful to the Mother Earth Foundation for supporting us in this endeavor because we are one uh, with them in supporting RA9003, which I'm sure our permaculture experts in our globe seed savers are also embracing, which is the segregation of waste at source, recycling, composting, ESWM. So Mother Earth is with us. We're very grateful for the partnership with Climate Reality Philippines. And uh, one of our guests has been trained by no less than my good friend, former Vice President Al Gore. And uh, we want the millennials to embrace urban gardening, to embrace seed saving, to embrace permaculture, organic farming, the natural way and the correct way of living. And we're also grateful to partner with the Institute of Climate and Sustainable Cities, uh, RED, who is a co-advocate of many of the things I do. The Department of Agriculture has been giving away starter kits and later on we will read those who have received starter kits. And um, oh, we have the pictures, okay. And uh, we make sure that they don't sell it. In fact, they use it, okay. And oh, later on, I'm going ahead. I have papaya seeds. I have Roselle seeds. I have Ampalaya. I have basil, I act on recycled paper, on recycled pandan, okay. Uh, I've been a seed saver ever since I was a child in Malabon. And um, I, daming buto, daming buto, we never waste anything. But uh, we'd like to welcome the experts who, was, who will tell us more about what they do and how we can, um, we can improve our way of living, okay. To talk about permaculture. Permaculture, okay, tell us now. Uh, we have Bert Peters, the president of the Philippine Permaculture Association, who may be a foreigner. I think he's European, he's Belgian, but he's actually already been in the Philippines for decades. And interesting, he has worked in Cabiao. I know Cabiao, Neva Isiha, is that correct? Yes. Hello, are you uh, with us from Cabiao, uh, Mr. Peters? You have signal there. Very yeah, good. Yeah, I am. I am. I am here. Yes. Very good. You tell us more about the Philippine Permaculture Association. Very good. And um, we have the founder of Philippine Permaculture Research, 
Jabez Flores, who I believe is from UP Los Manos. Very good. Hello. Are you with us from UP Los Manos? Good morning, Pa. Yes, Pa. Hi. I'm you're all, oh, this, this young boy is already a um, uh, doctoral student or a, a doctor of uh, permaculture. Environmental right. science, Pa. Then, uh, very good. Very good. I, I wish that, um, I don't know if you still know the deans of way back. Never mind. <laughs> On um, <laughs> Our guest is a soil mate that's so interesting because the founder of the green space philippines rina papio actually implements the laws that i've authored and i'm so glad that you actually make use of the soil and use our food waste uh to enrich the soil are you with us good morning rina papio. Hi, good morning deputy speaker ah, yes that's lauren okay and the global seed savers i'm so interested uh salamat sa uh, pagbibigay ng halaga sa ating mga buto. Sabi ko nga sa lahat ng tao, huwag kayo nagtatapon ng buto, buhay yan, right? Oh, so we must save our seeds. Karen Hizola, Global Seed Savers. Hi. Yes po, good morning po, Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Okay. Show me your seeds. <laughs> okay. Last night, uh, Ipat Luna uh, gave away some seeds uh, of Roselle and some of her overgrown talinum. I eat talinum every morning. I wish I'd shown you what I ate. The Organic Agriculture Program Leader in UP Los Baños, we have Dr. Vesila Calub. Okay, I love, I always like talking to agriculturists, especially those involved in organic farming. Dr. Vesilda Calub, are you with morning, us from UP Los Baños? Hi, good morning. You have a very impressive resume. Yes. And a, a dear friend who's like a soul sister uh, who embraces uh, many things that I've been working on for many decades and uh, she's so devoted and dedicated and passionate. Um, I'm not sure if she's in Cavite or in Palawan, but we welcome once again uh, an earth leader, uh, Carla Delgado. Hi, Carla. I hope you have a uh, signal now. Yeah. Okay. Very so, good. Uh, very good. You're still in Palawan, in the permaculture. Yes. Very good. Permaculture, please. I think you should... Uh, zoom your camera and show us uh, the farm. Okay. okay. Very good. I see. It looks like Kai Farms in Silang. Yeah, except the okay. sea is right there. Oh, very good. Okay, show us. Maybe you can walk, but maybe the Wi-Fi is a problem. Yeah. And another uh, sister in the environment and agriculture and many things I do is Paula Abarasturi. She and her husband, Nicolo, has trained my staff. I've attended their uh, lectures, workshops, which are so doable. And uh, the founder of Down to Earth. Hi, I always see her beautiful photos. It's amazing how you take all those nature photos. Are Good you with us? From yeah. beautiful Laguna. Yes, imagine. From Los Baños to Laguna, Palawan, Nueva Ecija, Metro Manila. So, Mr. Peters. Okay, tell us more about the Permaculture Association of the Philippines. First, let us define permaculture. Uh, from all our readings, permaculture means permanent agriculture. But uh, what are the elements of permaculture? Organic farming, ecological solid waste management, uh, water collection, water catchment, um, a natural design of the environment, and ecology and living with nature. But perhaps from a scientific a point of view from an expert's point of view being the head and founder of this association tell us about permaculture um as a as something that's doable uh every day and how can from the permaculture perspective how can we sustainably live in the better normal we have bert peters yeah welcome and uh, good morning to all uh, I prepared uh, a few slides. Uh, maybe it can help us to see and understand the, the story I would like to tell about permaculture. Uh, can I go to the first slide, please? Uh, yeah, so permaculture is a new normal. I try to make a story that uh, will capture permaculture, not just in, um, in general, but also what it means uh, for our current situation. So next slide, please. Um, permaculture is designing with nature, no? Hindi lang siya designing as an agricultural system, pero sa amin, mas malawak siya. Ma makasama din dito una yung ecosystem. So basically, permaculture designing, it's an ecosystem approach. Kasi ang itidesenyo natin ay yung kalikasan. 
and the picture you see here is uh, a diverse ecosystem that has been created over 20 years in the midst of a monoculture rice field. So what we try to do is to tap into the energies of nature and that's the second important part when you design with nature you're going to go into a biodiverse approach and and looking at the philippines it's an amazing uh, rich ecosystem uh, it's a biodiversity hotspot uh, i don't want to go to the negative parts of it pero ibig sabihin na maraming tayong buhay ilang likas yaman na pwede nating gamitin para sa ating ekonomiya ay eh, imbis na ang focus lang natin ay nasa kape, nasa cacao, nasa piña. Maraming buhay ilang dito sa Pilipinas na 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 untap na resources na nandun lang sila sa tabi. So when you do permaculture designing, you try to look at your ecosystem, you try to build it up again because we have been destroying them for over decades by looking at an uh, maybe a monetary oriented uh, economy that is only looking at the crops, not at the, the, the ecosystem that is going to help and protect you. So it's about saving these energies and maximizing the energies, the different crops, the different plants, the different animals, and all including them to create beautiful and attractive uh, patterns. And that's what, uh, what uh, permaculture designing does. It's creating beautifully and mimicking nature resilience. Uh, in that sense, we work a lot with bamboo because bamboo is an abundant material. It grows into three to five years into an, uh, fantastic crops. Ang problema lang, yung kwento ng malakas at maganda na wala na sa paligid natin. So, paano natin ibalik para we can, we can build up again buildings like the one on the right side uh, that is built with natural materials that are found in uh, Isabella province uh, and create beautiful patterns that are and resilient and also reflective of a culture that is local and is... Um, is being carried by people. That's why building patterns of permaculture is also working with people and building patterns with people. So basically, permaculture designing, and that's the essence of this first slide, it's about generating ecosystems based abundance. If you go to the next slide, uh, what is permaculture uh, uh, in action? We, we work a lot with local governments and LGUs. We have learned how to make the bridge and, 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 and make products that are locally relevant and uh, with abundant materials that you can find in localities and sell them as much as possible. We go to an, uh, a processing level, not to raw materials, but also how people can make them and create them and craft them into something useful like baskets, like uh, uh, weavings, like uh, bamboo bikes, uh, like wines, juices, etc. And then the education that we connect uh, in permaculture is, is trying to design. Sorry, can you go back to the... Yeah. Uh, design and craft and create. So it should be localized, relevant education. It's based on what goes locally and on the things that we can bring back locally to be able to create again a tri economy. And basically, and that wraps up the whole idea is permaculture designing is restoring and thriving along ecosystems throughout the Philippines. And every ecosystem has something to offer. We have 7,000 islands, so many different kinds of ecosystems. If we can only enhance the carrying capacities within and tap into the natural energies of the plants and the animals that are there. But we have to veer away from the monoculture systems. You can see we, we are building riparian projects, we are building bridges with, with volunteers, we are creating abundance again in landscapes that have been devastated for ages to bring back that, that, that energy, to bring back that uh, resilience and then I think we are better protected for the new normal. Basically, the new normal in this case is not just COVID, but it's also uh, climate, no? the, 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 the change in the climate. And it, essentially what you're doing here, it's you're empowering communities because these communities suddenly see and realize that they are not, uh, they're not depending anymore on, on, on foreign investments or imports. They are depending on what is been, being generated locally. So you create empowered communities that end, are going to, excel in the skills of working with their local materials and essentially they're going to protect what grows and lives and thrives locally as well. Next please. Next, uh, thank you. So in the new normal, I, I made this very specific. I think we need to slow down. One thing is uh, we need to start walking and biking and sharing a ride. Uh, look at our four lane highways. They are made for our machines. I, I, I personally find it so horrible. We need to make them again to be used by people, by, 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 by us, uh, because we don't create and we don't design for our machines. And in that sense, you're going to create and go back to bikes. And in the sense, I put here a bamboo bike. 
it's a, it's a beautiful blend of uh, a, a local skill and a local material and, and, and a means of transport that makes so much sense in the new normal. And if you, if you create an industry around bike making and if you create uh, an industry around growing bamboo and you provide livelihoods in the different provinces to, to be able to make these things and then go to improving skills, not just by making things, technical things, but also by uh, cooking and, and, and looking at food in a different way because it's not only about uh, rice and a few viands, it's about all these things that are growing here. I'm sitting also in a permaculture farm. There are a thousand things growing here that you can eat, but that are rarely being found in the market. So how can we bring back that kind of um, essence of food, not just as being translated into rice, because otherwise we are never going to veer away from our monocultures. In permaculture, you look at the diversity, you look at the, at the yield of, of all the different uh, crops that can provide you with an income, not just food, but also with making things and creating things that are going to make sense in the new normal. And in the end, again, that is to rekindle and strengthen local cultures. Again, we have 107 languages in the Philippines, but they're dying out very fast. So how can we make culture part of what we do? Slow down is one part of it. Go back to dances, cultures, uh, singing, songs that are related to what we do in the field. And then we create and grow crops that are relevant to people. And then we build uh, buildings that are, again, meaningful at the same time also uh, embracing the needs of people going, that are going to use them. In this case, you see a building on the right, which is an, a daycare center in the, uh, for the tribal community in the Sierra Madre. It has a rainwater collect, a collector, it has a compost toilet. It's a daycare center, open, built and facing uh, towards nature. So in that sense, you bring in uh, everything that people should know about nature to be able to design and work with it and to be able to craft with it. So creating meaningful and relevant things, that's, that's really the essence here uh, in the third slide. If you go to the fourth slide, uh, next please. So uh, permaculture in action through the association. Um, what we try to do here is, uh, 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 first of all, is um, living the life. Uh, we have been doing permaculture for the past 20 years. So nakita din namin na kung hindi, Hindi kami mismo ay nag, uh, nabubuhay tulad ng sinasabi namin. Uh, may, 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 may problema, may disconnect. So we built an off-grid office in uh, Marikina. It's the Office of the Permaculture Association. We, from the sewer system. So it's, uh, rain, it has rainwater collectors. It has, uh, it has compost toilets. It uh, has its own energy. Uh, it uh, has a solar panel. So the house can stand on its own and it doesn't uh, contribute to the wastewater that ends up in Manila Bay. Uh, that's the things that we would like to promote as well, that it's possible even in urban areas to apply and, 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 and use permaculture. Then we do a lot of education and training. We bring people together, open source, learn from each other. There are websites that we created, Facebook pages where we say, uh, share what you know and let people uh, tap into it because there is so much to learn if you talk about nature before you can start designing dapat siguro ang unang kailangan natin gawin is matuto tayo kung anong salita anong wika ng kalikasan and then we can create beautiful stuff then the third is the cyclical and don donut economy uh, we need to build up the social foundation there are too many people that are on the fringes of uh, survival we need to give them a fair share of, uh, of the benefits and of the, the wealth that's around us. And then we need to look at the ecological ceiling. We can't keep on destroying our environment. It's time for us to start building up again our ecosystems and veer away from the monocultures, add a lot of uh, resilience into the fields and uh, create thriving uh, ecological uh, uh, economic systems. And they can be happening in the urban areas as well as in the rural areas, because sometimes if I look at the rice fields, I just see green deserts. If I look at Manila, I just see uh, gray concrete. Uh, it's both as boring as uh, the one as the other. Also, we need to go back to making inclusive action and policies as well. Enhance or at least bridge towards local governments the things that we can do together. And in that sense, no one left behind. Try to include people. Try to create local and green jobs to be able to, to provide decent livelihoods, to provide livelihoods so people don't have to go to another country. And basically, what we try to do with permaculture in that sense is promoting and stimulating well-being in a very broad sense. 
uh, helping the LCUs to see that uh, a thriving life should happen in the first place within their own locality. And we should not be looking with jealous eyes to Metro Manila or to other urban centers where there is a lot of money, but lots of misery as well. So we try to balance that and we try to see what every area can offer in terms of livelihood and how we can help restore and rebuild ecosystems uh, throughout the Philippines. And next slide. Uh, um, I made it very short hmm? because I think there are so much uh, other things to share, but designing and creating ecosystems, designing with nature, that's the essence of permaculture. And uh, when we, in the past 20 years, we are looking forward to, to support into implementing riparian projects and eco restoration in terms of reclaiming all rivers and creek sites in the country. We feel it's something we can't do. In, we have five projects areas in the Philippines, two provinces, one city and two municipalities where we focus our attention. But the, 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 the job is so big that we need agencies of government to really step up this thing and, and create highways for animals and for other living creatures to, to move throughout our country and not just creating a country that is made for people because we need nature to help us to reclaim and to retrieve and to make ecosystems again very resilient. So riparian projects is one way of doing that. It, it combines tourism with abundance, with products, with designing. At the same time, it creates a natural corridor and a buffer zone in terms of uh, flood protection and uh, helping farmers to, to, to create uh, better crops in the, in the long term. So we need support on that one. And we're also lo launching a course on permaculture for senior high. We have thinking about it for a very long time. It's being proposed in Dominguez and it's being submitted locally to the, to the regional depot. If we can only get support to put permaculture design on, on uh, the national depot level, so for senior high, students have a, have, a, have a choice to make. They can now go into permaculture designing and they can graduate from high school as designers, meaning to say they become part of a thriving economy know how to, to look and, 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 and read nature instead of trashing it and making it, uh, and, and, and making it more ugly. They can now be part of the solution, try to help and build up um, new uh, ecosystems that can help them thrive and culturally survive uh, in the normal. And then lastly, it's uh, ensuring quality impl implementation of permaculture throughout the country. Uh, I'm not saying to say accreditation, but to help guide and give points systems or to give uh, uh, support system uh, towards people who are who want to in, in, um, who want to uh, start permaculture projects, and it's very complex. We know that from experience. So for them to be guided, to be assisted, it's important. And if we can help, if we can get support from government in doing that, that would be amazing. So very good. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Peters. We can see that uh, many of the laws actually, which are already in existence in the Philippines uh, for the past decades, if you put them together, uh, it are the elements of permaculture. We're talking about ecological solid waste management. We're talking about the Water Collection Act. We're talking about the bill for the circular economy. You call it the donut economy, correct? Uh, we're talking about the Clean Air Act. We're talking about uh, sustainable mobility. Uh, we're talking about even the Climate Change Act. So there's much that we could do together simply to implement already existing laws, but really uh, designing little or big farms, rural or urban areas, and make sure that every local government or even people's organization and NGO understand, implement, operationalize, and benefit from permaculture. We don't trash, we nurture. But uh, to tell us more about, thank you so much, and you stay on because we'll have a healthy discussion and I have so many messages on Facebook. But before that, um, we go to a, uh, are you, you're still a millennial, right? <laughs> a, a, a doctoral student, or have you already graduated of environmental science uh, in my alma mater, but he's from Los Baños. So tell us about his research on permaculture and, um, how crop biodiversity factors in in permaculture. Uh, tell us about, um, uh, they call you Mr. Flores, uh, Jabez, uh, based on your study, what are the benefits, okay, to households? So let's 
simplehan natin. Paano makikinabang ang barangay, ang mga household, sa mga disenyo ng permaculture uh, compared sa conventional farming yan. Kayo mga taga-Yupilos Banyos ang eksperto sa agrikultura, sa environment, etc. So, let's make sure ang ating mga magsasaka, ang ating mga uh, maliliit na farms, small farms, I'm a small farmer, uh, we can farm. Pa paano makikinabang sa permaculture kung ihambing natin sa regular o traditional conventional na farming. Ayan. Jabez, Flores. Thank you, Ma'am Lauren. Hello. Thank you, first of all, for this, for this opportunity that you have given me to share our research on permaculture. I would like to acknowledge also Sir Bert and Dr. Kalub. Actually, sila yung mga tao na responsible kung bakit ako Nandito sa field na to, Dr. Kalub was the was my professor in organic agriculture and Bert was my teacher in permaculture. So this was um, 2012 and 2014 respectively. And it, it is actually them who inspired me to pursue my PhD, my master's and my PhD, and do a study on this. So as, as we've seen earlier, uh, maraming ginagawa ang Philippine Permaculture Association all over the Philippines, but we haven't really heard about these things, especially in mainstream media. And we're happy to report that there are a lot of people doing this permaculture design in small scale, medium scale, and it's our job as researchers to make people aware that there is actually something very good happening. And it's really hard because it's not, it's not a topic or a subject matter that's really attractive. So that's why I'm thanking yung mga agencies na nag-fund ng study na to. First of all, Secretary De La Peña of DOST, SEI, and Dr. Bio for my scholarship, and Dr. Gregorio of CIRCA for funding yung aming research. So these are the people, the institutions that believe na merong future dito sa aming uh, ginagawa. Um, I would like to discuss first uh, permaculture and uh, diversity. So I, here in the slide, you can see, I said permaculture landscapes are designed for diversity. So this is very basic sa pagdating sa permaculture design uh, principles. So it's a conscious design. It means na the, the practitioner really uh, aims to have diversity and not just um, biotic but diversity or ibig sabihin yung mga crops, yung wildlife, yung mga trees. Not just that kind of diversity but biophysical diversity and social cultural diversity as well. So these things are sometimes neglected or ignored in the de in designs. So I have here uh, one of the study sites we had in 2018. I would like to give a shout out to Sir Enrico Navea. I believe he's Bert's uh, student, correct? Yeah, I think so, yeah. He was Bert's student uh, a few years ago and we went to his uh, farm. Actually, this is just a small patch of land in Isabella where he was making his own house. And this, in this small area, we, we, were act, we actually found 54 species of flora and, and fauna in a one hectare sampling area. And I would like to emphasize here his philosophy or his perspective on how he designed his uh, farm. If you're a conventional farmer or you don't know how to practice um, ecological or permaculture um, philosophy, you would just clear the whole area and plant it with your crops. But what Sir Rico did with his farm is he actually preserved a patch or a corridor of native trees where birds can actually live. So it's like a wildlife corridor. So later I will show you the things that we found in this area. But I would like to emphasize this site in that we that we have seen data. We see 12 sites in 2018. Next slide, next slide, please. Okay, in the 12 sites that we visited, we found that in a one hectare sampling area, there are an average of 27 crops per site. So these crops are not just for selling, but so the household, what they are. Also, 
back yard or front yard. So you can see in permaculture, there's an emphasis on perennial crops. So there's not as much uh, management when it comes to tending the garden. So you go there every now and then. But the focus on perennial crops it really um, reduces, reduces the labor, especially if you're a farm only have a few uh, farm staff. So there's 27 crops and that's an amazing uh, number because like here I, I, I've included in my slide, there's gabi. Usually this is um, neglected because it just grows in damp areas. Actually they eat, they, they eat this including the leaves and there's we see papaya, we also have okra, very easy to grow. And we have uh, turmeric and ginger. And we created a long list of these foods. We, we, we ranked them, which is the most common among the 12. And which of these common crops do they actually eat and prefer? We, we put an Before, emphasis on- uh, I'll, I'll just uh, um, interject. Happy birthday, yes. j oh, thank you. Today thank I received you. a message. And also, um, off the record, I mean, hindi dito sa ating webinar, we don't have time. Ire-report ko sa'yo ang aking crops. Mas marami pa sa 27, sa, mas sa kalaating ektarya. Super, super dami. Uh, herbs, puno, nakakain. It's an edible forest. Ah, sige, continue. That's good. Okay, Thank you. continue. So it's good to hear that uh, a lot of us, especially non-farmers, we have to be involved in growing uh, diversity in our own spaces. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, I have two of my research assistants here watching. Uh, I, I post uh, for them to be in the show, but due to lack of time, I just uh, uh, I will just share a part of what they did uh, for the team. So I have Malvin here. He's the one who's doing my maps, and I have Ericsson. He's one who who's the he's the one who helped me with uh, the biodiversity aspect. So we would like to show you the maps that we've done. So. This is a map of some of the study sites that we, we, we went to. It includes uh, Cabiao, also Bird's Office in Marikina, which is very small, but is very biodiverse. We have Kai Farms also here in Silang, Cavite. So Malvin said, uh, to share this to you. So the application of remote sensing geographic information system in studying permaculture is an essential tool in developing decision support system for agricultural resiliency. Next slide, please. So maps allow our farmers and researchers like us to visualize the geographic location of the sites, determine the available resources, identify farm components, and draw boundaries for suitable crops in relation to its physical environment. So you can see in this uh, slide, this is the number of permaculture practitioners that we've actually mapped in the Philippines so far. And um, based on our methodology, there's theoretically, uh, there's 200 uh, practitioners. We haven't really gone to each of those sites to check if they're really practicing permaculture. So out of the 200 uh, people who claim to have practiced uh, permaculture, we only went to, to 12. So I hope we can shed more of these people in the future. So thank you, Malvin, for making these maps for the team. Next slide, please. And here's Ericsson, he's, he's our wildlife uh, expert in the team. He went with me in Isabella, the, the first slide I showed you. Actually, you saw us there, and he said that more available species means that they can act as natural pest control, seed dispersers or pollinators, which can make the entire ecosystem more functional and resilient. So I think this is very unique because you don't start a farm with the birds in mind, right? So. I think um, Sir Rico, Enrico Navella, the one who, who designed the farm in Isabella, was really very conscious about the trees, the birds, and knowing what their role is in the farm. So it's, it does not just benefit him and his family, but also the environment. So before I end, I have these um, key points. So one is we have to understand what we have and what people are doing. So Bert presented what we are doing and what we have already. The loss that we have, we can put that into good use. From that, from information, that we can form our networks, we can start our interactions, and we build relationships. Relationships is key to permaculture, not just social relationships, but ecological as well. We are a complex system of interacting components. In permaculture, 
this is um, usually done in organic farming systems and agroforestry systems and in backyard gardens. And permaculture is redefining how we look at agriculture. It's not just managing systems for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all species. I have a question, Jabez. Does yes, a well, farm have to be assessed to be able to be called a permaculture farm? Because uh, many of the elements, if, in fact, all in, and much more, I use adaptation, I use agroecology, I use organic farming, and many, I, I walk my talk in implementing my laws for two decades. Does it have to be evaluated by someone like you who studied environmental science and given a certificate of having taken a course to be called a permaculture farm, but actually we've been doing it for many mm. years, if not decades. Yes, that's a good point. Actually, um, right now, the only indicators that we have if one is practicing permaculture or not is whether if, if, he, if he or she has taken a course or is a self-declared practitioner. So you can just declare because so far we don't have uh, standards for its practice. So anyone could just say that he or she is practicing permaculture. So we're working towards that to really see if who are the people who's practicing it. And for your next point is, what if you're already practicing permaculture? That's good because permaculture was packaged in a way for, to communicate to other people who has been disconnected from nature. So if you're already practicing permaculture without even knowing it, so that's very good. Yes, so by, yeah, that's very good. So I think so, I, I believe yeah. so because uh, many of the laws that we did from two decades mm -hmm. ago, uh, but anyway, we're, we're so happy to learn this from you. And sa mga gustong uh, mag-connect kay Mr. Peters uh, at sa research na ginawa mo, yung Permaculture Association, para hindi lang yung alam ko, kundi yung mga best practices sa Isabela, mm. sa Opisina sa Marikina, sa Cabiao Nueva Ecija, lahat yan, we can compare sa silang kalite yeah. kay Carla, oo. Um, at maski na walang farm, yung mga interesado at maari silang magkumpul-kumpul, isang commune na farm, parang yung sinabi ni Carol Malasig, I think, who's now in Berlin and watching us, yung Klein Garden type na isang uh, area ng gobyerno pero rinerent out sa mga walang farm, yung mga maliliit, tapos permaculture ang kanilang uh, ini-implement. Yes. Pero marami pa tayong mga uh, mag-share sa atin. So, salamat sa ating dayuhan yeah. na marunong magtagalog uh, Pilipinong salita na si Bert Peter sa Saka Nueva Ecija. Salamat din kay uh, birthday boy uh, Doc um, J. Best Flores, but you stay on. Kasi ngayon naman, yung ating paghahalaga sa lupa. At gustong gusto ko sasabihin niya lalo na kasi ito yung buod ng aking patas yung waste diversion. Nako, hindi na po dapat kinokolekta ng garbage collector ang ating food waste. Ha? Please lang, wag po, bawal po yan sa RA9003. Ha? Dapat po ang food waste, ang dry leaves, ang ating twigs, lahat ng galing sa kalikasan ay binabaon sa lupa at ginagawa pong compost or organic fertilizer. Pero para sabihin pa sa atin, ang kanilang ginagawa ng kanilang organisasyon na ang tawag ay Green Space Pilipinas. Uh, at sasabihin niya sa atin ang Bokashi Composting. So, yung ginagawa kong composting sa aking farm at sa bahay ko na binabaong ko lang sa compost pit tapos nilalagay ko ng, uh, ng soil, nilalagyan ko ng dry leaves, nilalagay ko ng twigs at uh, sinishred ko yung mga malalaking mga branches. Uh, tignan natin kung paano niya ituturo sa atin tong Bokashi Composting. Kung di ako nagkakamali, isang restaurant uh, sa Metro Manila uh, many years ago during a uh, trade fair of um, DNR sa ESWM, uh, does Bokashi, I'm not sure, uh, Rina Papio, is it um, cravings? Do they do Bokashi composting? Uh, they do a certain type of composting. But tell us about Bokashi composting and waste diversion and how it is an integral part of the circular economy and of the permaculture lifestyle. Yes, Deputy Speaker, thank you. Um, right po, cravings, uh, they've been practicing po um, Bokashi composting. So, and we're, we're trying to reach out to them and, and do that as well. So, uh, let me start by sharing lang po, no, na, Itong pinagda, itong pinagdadaanan nating pandemya 
uh, it has somehow help us realize kung gaano ka-importante na magkaroon tayo ng malakas, matibay na immune system at malaking factor doon uh, that, that to help boost our immune system yung kinakain natin. So, uh, when it comes to food and plant-based food, gusto natin healthy yung soil na paggagalingan ng, ng ating kinakain. Kaya itong uh, uh, slide please. Next. So pang itong uh, uh, from coming from Project Grounded, isa pong uh, paborito kong source ng anything about regenerative agriculture no, or regenerative practices. Um, to have a strong immune system, we need more of the beneficial microbes in our guts. So it it's just important na yung kinakain pala natin dapat puno rin ng mabubuting uh, mikrobyo at kapakipakinabang na mikrobyo. So for that to happen, it would be important na yung soil na pinanggagalingan ng pagkain ay healthy to, to begin with. At ang uh, pag-uusapan pag na po natin ng growing with nature, or permaculture, talagang hindi natin maihiwalay yung konsepto, yung idea ng soil health. At paano kaya tayo makaka-contribute in building soil? So, ang sagot po dyan, yung kinakailangan natin to make healthy soil, next slide please, uh, marami po tayo nyan sa bahay natin. At yun nga yung food waste, kagaya po nang nabanggit ni Deputy Speaker Lauren ano, na hindi na dapat natin tinatapon ang, ano, ang ating food waste. Um, also, language nating mga Pinoy ang, ano eh, ang pagkain. Palagi tayong nakakaisip ng dahilan para mag-celebrate at magkainan. We all love a manyanita. So, more than 50% of what we throw ay food waste. And not to mean na nag nagsasayang tayo ng pagkain, pero every time we prepare food, meron at merong unavoidable scrap, food scrap, and after we eat, naging merong leftovers na kailangan talaga nating i-dispose. And normally, yan ang ginagawa natin. No? Binapack natin sa, sa plastic bag, iniipon natin yung food waste natin, and then nihintay natin ang schedule ng truck to pick up the biodegradable waste. But sadly, they all end up in a landfill. Yun yung ayaw na natin sana gawin kasi whenever we send our food waste to the landfill, we are throwing away valuable resource that can help build soil. So, sayang yung itinatapo nating food waste. So, at Green Space, uh, we really want to talk to you about an alternative. So, there, uh, a new way to food waste, not, not really new, pero if you've been doing the traditional way of putting it in a bag at pinapadala sa truck, it's time to change it. Let's compost it. Maraming paraan ng pagkocompost, pero ang Specifically, I posting. So, ito po yung imbis na sa bag nyo, ilalagay yung, yung food waste nyo, meron kayong composting bucket kung saan ihaha food waste together with a Bokashi brand. Ang Bokashi brand po uh, ay gawa yan sa, sa rice brand or darak na finerment using a microbial inoculant. So, puno po ito ng beneficial microbes. Kaya, ang ginagawa ng, ng Bukashi brand sa ating food waste, fineferment niya. So, whenever you hear po Bukashi composting, the key is fermentation. So, hindi lang pala sa pagkain. No? Malamang pag sinabing fermentation, naisip natin, o oh, achara, maybe kimchi. Um, uh, ginagawa din natin sa, sa food waste. And dahil it is this fermentation process uh, that allows us na Pwede tayong magsama ng meat, ng dairy, ng fish, ng cooked food doon sa ating composting box. Normally kasi sinasabi natin na huwag isama yung meat, huwag isama yung uh, dairy, pero with the uh, Bukashi composting, maaari nating isama yon. At dahil din doon sa fermentation process na, na mangyayari, uh, we avoid foul smell coming from from nabubulok na na basura. And pag walang mabahong amoy, yun kasi yung nag-attract ng pest. So, ayaw natin na, na mabulok siya at bumaho siya para wag tayo magkaroon ng problema ng mga itis, ng langaw. So, marami pang benefits ang 
Bukashi composting. Um, next slide po, please. Generally, we do it in two phases. First, in our kitchen. So, pwedeng kitchen na high or a office, uh, kitchen ng, ng, ng mga restaurants, small businesses. The idea is anywhere where food preparation is happening and nangyayari ang kainan, nandun yung food waste. So, we, we do the collection uh, of our food waste in a bucket at lalagyan natin yun ng Bokashi brand. This next phase happens in the garden. Uh, yun naman ay kung, kung saan kailangan na natin ihalo yung ating na-ferment na food waste with soil to do its work. It's always yung soil microbe ang tapos ng buong decomposition. Um, clarify something lang, uh, between... I'll just clarify, Rina. Bokashi yes. is a brand. Or is so, it a generic name? Ah, it's a generic name po. Ang... Uh, Bokashi, Japanese term siya na ang ibig sabihin niya ay fermented organic matter. Uh, so, so, ito ay maaring uh, gawin o bilin. Uh, we're not endorsing any brand, right? Okay. Very clear. It's a method. It's uh, a method. Well, Deputy Speaker, with what we do, um, kung kailangan nyo ng Bokashi brand, we make Bokashi brand and we also sell it. So, pero pwede mo rin gawin. Ang mga household, kaya rin nilang gawin. Oo. Yes. Yeah? Uh -oh. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Continue, please. Okay, so, so, oh, so sa pagitan po no, nung phase 1 and phase 2, yung nangyayari sa loob ng bucket natin, once puno na yan ng food waste at tatakpan na natin siya, itatago na natin siya for 2 weeks, doon na nangyayari yung fermentation. So, phase 1, we normally call it men at work. Tayo yan. Uh, as in, we're being deliberate with our action of layering the food waste and the brand inside the bucket. Pero uh, phase two, nature at work na yan. So we expose it to the elements. We let it breathe, may soil, uh, water. Para maliwanag, no? Yeah. Uh, step by step tayo, no? Sa mga first timer ito. Although, uh, ako many years ago, uh, when uh, cravings um, their ecological solid waste uh, uh, booth in the DNR trade fair, they showed us how they do bokashi. But it's not uh, easy to do right away. Let's go step by step. Kaya I'm glad that you have phase one. Sige. Yes. So, sa mga tapos na mag-almusal ngayon, ayan, gusto natin i-walk through sila. Yes. Hanap po kayo ng maski nung lalagyan may takip. Tama? Yes, important po yung bucket na may mahigpit na takip. Ayun. So, Kailangan importante talaga i-walk through natin. Sige, yeah. walk pasensya na ha. Ay, okay. I'm interviewing para din maintindihan ng lahat kasi ang dami kong mga nag-text na kaibigan, tinatanong ako. <laughs> Sige. Yes. Mas so, ano na lalagyan? Uh, maaring? Maaari ma pong gamitin. Yes, basta ang importante ay ma ma either meron siyang mahigpit na takip or magagawa nyo ng paraan na magkaroon siya ng mahigpit na takip. Bakit kailangan natin yung mahigpit na takip? Dahil yung pong fermentation process na ginagawa natin sa Bokashi Composting, yung tinatawag na anaerobic, meaning walang walang hangin. Although, it's not going to be 100% walang hangin kasi palagi natin siyang bubuksan at okay. lalagyan ng laman. Balina. Pero important... Balina. Maliwanag, isang timba o lalagyan na may food may waste. Na Dalawang linggo, iiwanan natin na mahigpit ang takip para hindi rin mapasukan ng lamok, langaw, yes. stray cat, aso, o mas ano. Okay, so, dalawang ang, linggo, mahigpit. O, sige na. Okay. Okay. Ang so, importante so, lang din pong malaman natin dun sa paglilayer, ang kailangan natin maging expert of is yung tamang paglilayer ng ating food waste at nung Bokashi brand. Um, kailangan, ang, ang pinaka-basic na tinuturo namin, at least isang dakot ng brand, Bokashi brand, for every bowl full of food waste na ilalagay mo sa loob ng bucket mo. Pero, uh, it, it's not, uh, ano naman po siya, uh, hindi siya yung tipong strict rule and you'll go wrong pag hindi mo siya sinunod. Kasi, for some, na, it's all fruits and vegetables. Sprinkle lang ng Bokashi brand. Uh, kaya na niyang ma-ferment okay. yung ano na yan. Yeah, we, go to, we go to the second step, Rina. Thank yes. you. Yes. 
So once that's that's full, na ferment na siya, your microbes has work, and then you go to phase two. Kailangan mo na siyang ihalo sa lupa. So, um, etong stage na to yung uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng iba-ibang challenges, special especially sa urban area, no? Uh, what we want to do is kung meron kang garden, maghukay ka, ilubog mo yung fermented food waste mo, tabunan mo ng lupa, sama mo na din yung mga dried leaves. Kagaya ng na-mention yung kanina, dried leaves sa, sa garden mo. And then, uh, you just leave it that way. And in four weeks' time, pwede mo na siyang ma-harvest or pwedeng diretsyo mag-plant ka na dun sa nilubog mo na food waste. Pero for some wala akong garden, I, let's say I live in a condo. If you have a small space in your, in your home, uh, you can do yung tinatawag nating soil factory. You have an old lawn basket, ilalain mo siya ng garbage bag, dun mo ililayer yung lupa at yung iyong fermented out of it. So, pwede and if you, if you don't have space, willing silang i-compost yung, yung food waste mo, fermented food waste mo. You can uh, check them out. Uh, if I may share about the composting revolution page in Facebook, uh, maraming taong doing uh, food waste, uh, bukashi composting, nandoon member ng page. Yun. And pwede kang maghanap, meron bang willing tumanggap ng fermented food waste mo. But also, what if we can help uh, dun sa po, usapan po ng food gardens, no? Kaya, kaya I'm always working close then with Carla. Kasi when we, we talk about food gardens or making co community gardens, hindi lang sana pagtatanim. Pero let's also have a space there na people who don't have space at home can bring their bucket, mailubog sa lupa yung fermented food waste nila para there's compost for the garden. Uh, that's hey, that's one thing that... Um, um, actually, may batas na gaya na yan. 2001, RA 9003, yes. the Ecological Solid Waste Management Law, the Mother Earth Foundation, si Sonia Mendoza is watching us right now, also reminded me, yung material recovery facility, yes. kasama dyan yung compost yes. yes. So, actually, 19 years na yan. Oo oh, nga po. At ang bawat barangay, bawat bahay, kung walang space, tama ka, ang bahay, sa barangay, may compost pit, binabaon sa lupa ang food waste mm -hmm. kasama ang mga twigs, right. at dry leaves, etc. Right. Okay. Opo. So, Siguro po kailangan lang nating tulungan yung mga lugar na kung hindi pa talaga fully nag-operate yung kanilang mga composting site and we can have that. And actually po kung none of those works and talagang kailangan ng tulong, we we offer our services to compost. So just do the phase one and then we'll do the composting for you. So, uh, may mostly commercial or uh, commercial clients, corporate clients, yung, yung nakakausap namin, uh, such that ipunin nila yung food waste nila in, in, in buckets or in drums, kasi kung maramihan na po, no? Um, and then we will take it from them. Iwanan namin sila ng empty na nalalagyan ulit and their bukashi, replenish their bukashi brand so they can continue collecting. And then we take care of, of phase two. So, we'll post all the contacts of um, Mr. Flores, Mr. Peters, and Ms. Uh, Papio, and we also proceed now. Thank you very much, but stay on because all of these are connected uh, in everything yes. we do. Thank you. We'd like to talk about seeds. So, we talk about permaculture and the circular economy. We talk about organic farming. We talk about regenerative um, agriculture. We talk about the circular economy. We talk about seeds, we talk, we talk about waste, we talk about solid waste, we talk about soil. Now we talk about seeds and seedlings and vegetables and plants and trees. Why must we save seeds? Why do we throw away our seeds when seed, seeds are life? And so the Global Seed Savers is with us today and I'm a proud seed saver again without even uh, realizing uh, that there is such a global seed saver movement. I want to join you because I, since I was a child, taga ipo ng buto ang tawag sa akin ng aking mga kaloro. So kasama natin yung executive director ng global seed savers. We have Karen Hizola. Are you with us, Karen? Hello. Yes, good morning po. Uh, Sabihin niyo sa akin, uh, bakit mahalaga 
Although alam ko na sana yung sagot sa tanong ko, pero gusto ko ikaw magsabi, bakit mahalaga uh, mag-ipon ng ating mga buto and how is the proper seed collection done? Yan. Lahat ang kumakain ng papaya, <laughs> lahat ang kumakain ng manga, ng avocado, o oh, ikaw na. Sige, yes, ikaw, Deputy Speaker, those, thank you very much. Those are part of my presentation. Um, first, I'd like to thank you, Deputy Speaker, for um, being such a strong advocate of the environment and for passing a lot of uh, bills supporting um, the environment and women and children. And I'd like to thank Carla also for inviting us here, um, including us in this conversation. Um, and of course, all of the colleagues that we have here you know, who are working uh, towards uh, making, creating a better normal for everyone. So, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So we will start with the power of seeds. So ano ba yung ano? Ano yung kapangyarihan ng seeds and why are seeds very important in our lives, especially ngayon sa panahon ng pandemya? Um, seeds actually, when you hold the seed in your hand, it's like holding the past, the present, and the future, ano? Because meron kang record ng kung ano man yung mga tanim na nagproduce na seeds na yon, and you're holding the future in your hand because ang seeds po, sab uh, tulad po na sinabi ni Deputy Speaker, they are actually key and they are self-replicating. They're key to um, making sure that we are able to flourish in the future. And ang napansin po namin sa aming work ay seeds actually have the ability to bring people together no, regardless po of age, gender, race, religion, or sexual orientation. So um, ang ginagawa po natin ay we're trying to ensure that tayo po ay seed sovereign. Um, so meron po tayong control sa sarili po nating uh, seeds sa kung ano po yung ating tinatanim kasi ito po ay very important factor in ensuring food security and food sovereignty. So next slide please. Okay, so why save seeds? These are four photos that I'd like to show you. So it's, let's start from the left. Ano yung nasa left, no? Yung nasa left most is a group of uh, young children. Um, they're probably part of a community and, and a, a family. So why am I showing this? Uh, because in relation to seeds, ano, importante po yung um, we take note of the importance of seeds in food security. Uh, tulad po na sinabi ko po kanina, um, the first part po sa equation ng food security ay ang control over our own seeds. The second part, I think, uh, the second photo will show you, um, this is a photo by Dave Leproso. Um, this is a picture of what happened nung Typhoon Manghut here in, uh, in Benguet. So I'm in Baguio right now. Um, and so, yung landslide na po yan affected so many lives and actually madami po mga families na nag-suffer because of that. And why, why am I showing this photo? Because I'm, uh, I would like to relate seeds po sa um, climate adaptation. Importante po to, especially um, when we're looking at, kasi alam natin na ang Pilipinas po, sa, according to some indices po, ano, ang Pilipinas ay nasa top uh, four or top five na countries na pinaka vulnerable sa climate change po. And so in in answer to that, we have to have seed diversity. And I was actually um, thinking about suggesting po na maybe we could incorporate this as part of our um, DRRM programs. So uh, see... Yes, the Climate Change Commission is our partner here and everything we're yes, discussing po. will be part of our programs of government. In fact, in the resolution I filed to integrate the circular economy uh, policies into the Better Normal Bill, I decided to have a standalone uh, bill on the circular economy so that everything that we are talking about now, whether it is uh, soil composting, which is actually a part already of ecological solid waste management, but we will reiterate in our circular economy bill. Everything about permaculture we're discussing, although it's already in my Forest Garden Act and in my Better Normal Bill, we will also include there. Uh, everything we're discussing, uh, we will have a working, uh, technical working group Zoom wow. session with you, not just this Facebook Live uh, webinar, uh, to craft the um, circular economy and a sustainable economy bill. 
Okay, proceed, thank please. You. Thank you very much, po, Deputy Speaker. Um, that's very, very much ano, uh, appreciated. Po. And so, uh, so from that, no, from climate adaptation, we go to culture. So, lahat po ng, ano, lahat po tayo, siguro, we, will, uh, we can remember pa yung ating parents or grandparents who used to save seeds before. Ano? And then, talaga po part ng kultura ng Pilipinas, especially in terms of rice and other ano, heirloom na mga seed varieties, yung um, seed saving. And then the next one is biodiversity conservation. Why is this important? Kasi um, alam po natin sa pinakita po ni Jabez kanina, no? and sa pinakita din po ni Kuya Bert kanina, na um, every, uh, every single species po na nasa ating uh, ecosystem is very important. So pag nawala yung isa, everything else will be affected. So this is very important sa biodiversity conservation. And I'd like to echo lang yung sinabi po ni Jabez kanina na underutilized crops. Madami po tayo. In fact, ang Pilipinas po ay kilala as isang mega biodiverse na country sa buong mundo. Um, we have in some, in some, ano, uh, some groups say na there are about 9,000 plus, some groups say there are about 16,000 plus na fauna. Um, different types po ng mga tanim sa Pilipinas. And biologists estimate na meron po tayong around 10% po na edible. So if we are able to map and discover kung ano po itong mga pagkain na to at we're able to save their seeds po, um, maybe it can help change and address yung malnutrition issues po natin, yung food security na issues po natin. Um, so tuturo tayo sa DepEd ha, na mga studyante na mag-ipon ng mga buto. Ha? Tuturo natin yan ha. Yes, Lahat ng so, ginagawa natin to, gagawa tayo ng maikli lang na video na i-share natin, ilalabas natin online. Uh, or we will do it in five minutes para <laughs> uh, masimplify at maintindihan ng mga bata. O, sige, okay, thank you very much. Next slide, please. Okay, so how do we save seeds? No? How do we uh, collect seeds? Meron po tayong tatlong pinaka-key na paraan. So first, we harvest the seeds. Titignan po natin, no, depending on the type of seed, meron tayong three ways. It's, I put there, WWFD, para ma madali po natin ma-remember. Ano yung W? So wet processing. Yung wet processing ay hinuhugasan lang po natin yung seeds to clean them of debris. So tatanggalin natin yung seeds na, na nasama po sa pag-harvest natin. Ano yung WF? Itong WF is wet processing naman with fermentation. So, ano yung wet processing with fermentation? Napapansin natin, di ba, meron tayong mga seeds. For example, sa kamatis, um, ano yung, ano, uh, if you look at the seed ng kamatis, meron, or meron siyang parang um, yung wet na, na covering around the seed. So, we do a little bit of fermentation um, in this in this processing. And then the next one is dry. So of course, yung dry, gaya ng um, chai, gaya ng uh, mga herbs like basil, they're very easy to, ano, to, to just uh, harvest the seeds pagka dry na po yung, um, yung part ng uh, plant na may seeds po. So those are the three ways to harvest seeds. And then, paano po natin sila isa-store? Kung, for example, hindi pa po natin itatanim agad ngayon, kailangan po natin silang ma-store sa cool, dark, and dry place. So, tatlo po, uh, uh, kailangan po silang nasa cool, dark, and dry place. Kasi po, sabi po, uh, tulad po na sinabi ni Deputy Speaker kanina, um, ang seeds po ay may buhay. So, meron po tayong tinatawag na embryo, o meron po tayong tinatawag na parang um, baby na nasa loob po ng seed. And so we have to make sure na hindi natin magigising yung seed na to kung ayaw pa po natin siyang itanim. So we store them in a cool, dark, and dry place. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. So I'll, I'll just speak briefly about our organization. So who are we? We are Global Seed Savers. Uh, it started here in the Philippines po talaga because uh, our founder, Sherry Manning, was at least for volunteer dito sa Pilipinas. So we're a non-profit and then ang ginagawa po natin ay nag-facilitate po kami ng trainings and nag encourage po kami sa farmers and other people to go back to seed saving. And then ang, ang ating pong model is uh, to teach po kung ano talaga yung uh, best practices ng seed saving. And then, kung may interes interesado po ng mga groups, um, we do seed trials. So, tinatest po natin kung ano yung mga seeds na um, pwede po or viable po sa kanilang mga 
um, places or sa kanilang communities. And then next po is that um, we have an agreement with the group. Uh, I'm speaking, parang there's an issue with my internet connection si Guru po. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, so those who are watching us now and those who are with us, uh, we'll watch later how we do the Bokashi composting. We'll also give away seeds. We are not selling starter kits. We are giving away starter kits for agriculture and I'm giving away my seeds and more. And Ipat Luna who's also with us. So we're giving away papaya, rosel, ampalaya, basil, at marami pa. So lahat, I will also read all the Facebook messages. Napakadami, daan daan. So we will give away seeds. Um, thank you very much uh, for the, to the Global say, uh, Seed Savers. Uh, thank you, Rina. Thank you, Javis. Thank you, Bert. We now go to uh, Yuki Los Banos once again. Um, tell us, um, Dr. Uh, Kalub, um, you're an expert in agroforestry, uh, in soil and water con conservation in organic agriculture. And um, I will no longer speak. Uh, it's already 11.08 and we have uh, to listen to you and we have Carla and, um, and um, Paula to react to our presenters today. May we see your slides, uh, Dr. Kalu, from Yupilas Manios because she has tried to integrate all of what we're talking about in the depth ed K-12 program curriculum. Yes, thank you very much for uh, the Deputy Secretary and Deputy Speaker uh, for the opportunity now. We see you. Okay. Uh huh. Okay, we see you now. There. Okay, Dr. Desilda Kalum, please proceed. Good morning. Good morning po. Maraming salamat po sa pagkakataon na makapag-promote kami ng ginagawa namin na School Plus Home Gardens Project. Uh, we'd like to ask or share with you na would the School Plus Home Gardens be a better normal? So we are, uh, the School and Home Gardens Project is a collaborative activity of the Southeast Asian Regional Center for Agrarian like, Studies and Research in Agriculture in the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, especially the school teachers in Laguna, wherein we piloted this project in six schools starting in 2016 up to 2017. So 18 months left for your From the six pilot schools, they are now scaling up on their own, using their own money, using their own funds, using their own energy, Sila po ngayon ay nasa 50 plus elementary and high schools. Very recently, meron po tayong very, very strong demand sa Buswanga Puron for us to set up a similar uh, school plus home gardens but gusto po nila i-integrate ang biodiversity at saka ang entrepreneurship element. So, nandun po kami ngayon sa stage na nag-negotiate po kami kung kailan kami magpapa-training. We're supposed to have the training last April pero na-COVID naman po. So we are now challenged by uh, doing the training, but doing it online. Relative, related to that, in 2017, I conceived that we na would develop na isang online course for scaling up the School Plus Home Gardens project nationwide, muna, sa Pilipinas muna, and after that, we pan out po natin sa Southeast Asia. Uh, also very recently, in April, at the height of the COVID lockdown, um, we thought about ano kaya nangyayari sa mga schools natin, sa mga gardens ng na ating mga, mga bata. So we did an online survey to assess the usefulness of the school plus home gardens amidst the COVID-19 lockdowns. And the surprise po kami, we had 1,257 respondents, 293 teachers, 344 parents, at saka po 620 students. What are the key accomplishments of the project? So students learned and enjoyed planting vegetables. Na, na, natutuwa po sila na, ay, ganito pala tumubo ang pechay. Ah, ang mungubo pala, ganito ang itsura ng tumor. And then, the children also enjoyed eating the vegetables that they planted. Marami po sa ating mga bata hindi kumakain ng gulay. But um, when they are involved in the planting, 
uh, harvesting and cooking, natutuwa po silang kumain. And then of course, with this project, families actively engage in their children's nutrition through school and home gardening. We also made use of the school gardens as an open-air classroom for teaching, uh, education, pang tahanan at pang pagkabuhayan for the elementary PPT. At saka yung PLD, ito yung pang high school na technology and livelihood education, also science, math, and English. But integrating in those subjects the, the science of food and nutrition, organic agriculture, edible landscaping, climate resilience, composting, in the, uh, isang speaker ko kanina, from biodegradable waste. But ang first lesson po dyan, kailangan mag-segregate mo na. Hindi pwede i-compost yung may kasamang mga plastic at ibang ibang masuka. Another main activity po ng project is teacher's capacity, uh, is that the teacher's capacity and the confidence was strengthened through the support from the local government units, government agencies, the academe, at saka po ng parents. At ang isa po pong na-appreciate ng, ng teachers ay yung participatory planning, action, and monitoring and evaluation. Sila po ang um, enable natin na mag-analyze, mag tapos mag-plano, mag-implement, at saka po mag-monitor uh, ng kanilang progress. So, with, with those few slides, and, and a quick presentation, masasabi ni po ba na um, school plus home gardens is an option for a better normal. Kung convinced man po kayo or hindi, we, are, we would like to share with you our learning resources. Ito po ang unang dalawa ay um, videos that you can download. And the third one is a guidebook para po sa mga schools na gusto magkaroon o gusto mag-set up na kanilang uh, school plus home gardens project. And if you need further information, at po ang lingkod, ako po si Basil Lacali, Organic Agriculture Program Leader ng Agricultural Systems Institute, College of Agriculture and Food Science sa UP Las Pinas. Magyan po ang aming number at saka po ang aking email address. Lastly, I'd like to uh, challenge everyone, let's do good, let us be felt, and together let us make a difference in the lives of our children. Very good. Salamat. Thank you very much. Thank you. So it's very clear that first we should segregate waste at source, recycle, and compost because we cannot compost if there is plastic, if there is can, if we do not segregate bote lata plastic, if we do not segregate what is um, recyclable or what is residual or lata at yun lang dapat ang kinokolekta ng garbage collector. Alam-alam yan ni Sonia Mendoza. So, the Bokashi way of composting, whether you have a bucket or whether you have um, a compost pit in the barangay, in your farm, in your home, it can be communal. Uh, second, dapat i-replenish at i-regenerate ang lupa. Very clear. Hindi lang pangalagaan ang mga gulay, pero syempre, ang lupa na kinalalagyan ng ating mga tanim ay dapat i-regenerate. Kaya dyan ang gagaling uh, ang mga vitamina o ang nutrients ng akin mga kinakain. Kaya rainwater collection is also very important. Ang aking pangtubig sa aking mga gulay na tinatamin, tinatanim sa lupa man o sa paso ay galing sa ulan. Sa panahon ngayon ng tag-ulan, meron akong ginawang rainwater collector, yung alulud ng bahay, doon na pupunta ang tubig ulan. At yung tubig ulan ang siyang sinasandok or naglagay ka ng maliit na lotek lang na gripo at doon ikakabit ang hose para ang aking pechay, ang aking kale, ang aking arugula, ang aking alukbati at malunggay at marami pang iba na matutuwa si uh, Mr. Flores um, more than 27 crops in less than a hectare. Napaka-biodiverse ng aking maliit na patch dahil sobra talaga at naka-inventaryo. Lahat ng puno, halaman at bulaklak ay merong tungkod 
na pangalan. Kung pwede ko lang ipakita dito. Okay. Next, um, Carla Delgado and Paula Abedesturi uh, will give us their reactions. Carla from Palawan, who's an earth leader who has embraced permaculture and um, sustainable way of living. Uh, Carla, would you like to comment on Mr. Peters, on Mr. Flores, on Ms. Papio, on Dr. Uh, Kalob, and uh, Ms. Hizola, and they're all your friends. So <laughs> would you like to give us your inputs on how else do we influence uh, not just those who are watching us now by the thousands and that I used to read, but every household, every barangay, 42,000 barangays in the country, if they just grow their own food, there will be no hunger during any pandemic. Carla. Thank you for having us all on your show today, Deputy Speaker Lauren. Um, coming, being in Palawan today, I feel that what I need to bring to the show is the connection to the sea, the dagat, because the Philippines is 7,100 islands and we're an island nation. And I'm now in a permaculture farm by the sea. Usually I'm in Kai Farms in Silangkavite, but during this um, pandemic, I'm here in the Tao Farm, which is a permaculture farm by the sea. And uh, I realized that it's quite, parang it's, it's the ideal model for the um, many parts of the Philippines to follow because here in this farm, we have food gardens, permaculture food gardens with the biodiversity that um, Jay Best talked about and the whole ecosystem is supporting life, not just the human beings, but also all the species, the birds, the pollinators, the bees, because it's a healthy ecosystem. And here also all the the homes are made of bamboo. So you can, it's very sustainable because you can even grow the materials to build these homes. And they're designed in a way to be resistant to typhoons because as we all know, we're the most um, typhoon prone nation on the planet. So that's a, that's a reality. Um, and also living next to the sea gives us an extra source of protein because there's fish in the sea. So during a pandemic, I think it's important to think about um, living in a place that supports abundance of wellness for Filipinos. And I think we have a better chance of this outside of the cities and in healthy places like this where there's sunshine, there's um, land that we can grow our own food, and then there's the sea and there's natural vitamin D and natural abundance and wellness. So the chances for Filipinos to be healthy happy and strong, I think are much higher out here in provinces like Palawan. So just bringing in that, that nature energy and that, um, that, uh, that thought to this, today's webinar. And thank you for everything you are doing for the environment, all these bills that I've just been writing, the Better Normal Bill, Circular Economy Bill, Forest Garden Act, sustainable economy bill. I mean, thank goodness there's somebody like you doing all this. So thank you so much. Yes, great. And um, those are the bills as congressman now, but let me just give a rundown of all the laws I enacted in my three terms in the Senate, uh, not to brag, but so that the global yes. seed savers, uh, the Green Space uh, Filipinas, the Permaculture Association, UP Los Baños, everyone can implement the laws, Clean Water Act, Ecological Solid Waste Management Law, Climate Change Act, People Survival Fund, Renewable Energy Law, Clean Air Act, Environmental Education Awareness Act, and many more. So you see, we have the laws. I am one with you in all your advocacies and all the things we're doing. Let us remind everyone in the barangay level, uh, the people's organizations, that are seed savers and our soil uh, composting experts and our biodiversity mappers and our permaculture experts. Tell them there are these laws and just go to my website and my Facebook page, everything is there. And we will post this webinar in my Facebook. Ikalat ninyo parang informasyon ay lumaganap. Gaya ng pagkalat ng virus, ang pagkalat ng ating informasyon sa pag-save ng isang buto 
sa pagsa-save ng buto ng papaya. Pag ang guro, Dr. Kalub, ay magsabi sa mga estudyante sa eskwelahan, kumain ako ng papaya ngayong araw na ito at imbis na itapon, yan ay tinabi ko at aking tinuyo. Ako pa ay bata nung 1960s. Ako po ay nagtutuyo na at nangangolekta po ng buto. Ako ay ilang dekada na pong seed saver. So I'm so happy to be with the global seed savers. Maliban po dyan, ang paghihwalay ng basura ay napakahalaga para hindi tayo bumibili ng fertilizer at gumagawa tayo mula sa mga food waste at mula sa mga tuyo na dahon. At ang ating pag-aakma ng ating pamumuhay sa ecology, sa ating kapaligiran, yan ay isa sa mga essence ng permaculture. We hear from down to earth, uh, Attorney Paula Abedasturi, na sila ang nagbibigay ng mga lectures at training sessions at uh, nandyan ba kayo? Um, Nicolo yeah. and Paula, are you with us? Very good, we have you. Very good. Hello. Sila din yung uh, nagbibigay ng mga drum. Drum lang ha? Mga isang two square feet lang pero magbibigay ng buhay na pagkain, yung tinatawag natin tower garden. Nako, Attorney Paula, a bit of story. Hello, yeah. I just wanted to say thank you again, Deputy Speaker Lauren, and to all the speakers today. Uh, yeah, we, you can really do small things just from your home. So, from the speakers alone, my reaction is that somehow the earth, nutrition, and how we live and act are all interconnected. And you can start small in your own houses, in urban gardens, in what we have, like the small tower gardens, you can do it yourself. And then aside from that, people sometimes get overwhelmed. They want to do organic agriculture or start farming or growing their own food and they think it's too much. But as you can see, there's so many people doing it already, experts in the field, and we can share knowledge. And you can start small just by composting and starting food, uh, growing food in your own homes. And yeah, just, just that. And that it's easy and it's inspiring and that it's all interconnected. So once you start growing your own food, you can fix your nutrition and also help the environment. And the one last thing is biodiversity. That's what I got from this from the speakers today. And also to uh, always be living and acting according to the rhythms of nature. That's all. Thank you Thank again. Thank you very much, Attorney Paula. Uh, please stay on, all of you, because I have to read many of our guests today. Let me see. I am looking. Um, I don't have my glasses. Allow me to wear my glasses. Uh, my staff, where did you put the list of the... Okay. Romel Resurrection, good morning po. Sumain nyo ang peace. Carmela Opena, Makabontok, good morning po. Gemma Regina Pastano, Corpus Morning. Flor Lopez de Leon, good morning po. Antonette Acantilado, good morning po. Twinkle Ledesma Peralta, good morning ma'am, God bless. Harriet Tauli, magandang umaga. Helen Osorio Ventura, I'm watching from Malibay, Pasay, good morning to all. Stay safe everyone, God bless us always. Dona Sanidad, good morning po. Maken, good morning from Mandaluyong. El Pecano, good morning. Lauren Legarda and to everyone watching from Cebu, oh keep safe in Cebu. Queen Loresto Pugarin, watching from Aninii. Duro, duro, gintasalamat sa ako kasi manwa sa Antique. Maria Madeline, good morning. Gabushon Carmelita Ponce, good morning. Teresa Ruela, Cebu Seed Savers. Aba, nandiyan ng Cebu. Global Seed Savers, thank you for having us. We're very happy to be with you in this panel. Yes, you're still here. Melinda Ponce, oh, my former staff. Good morning po, ma'am. Hingil Miller Domingo Magpusao, good morning, Deputy Speaker Lauren and Company. Michelle Reyes Samia, good morning from the Depp Ed family of Pila Laguna. Ang gaganda ng heritage houses dyan. I'm sure meron din kayong food gardens. Rolando Vinoya, good morning. Salamat po sa opportunity na makabahagi at matuto. Elinor Papio Caranzo, good day. Kit Ian Masusi, Kuya Bert, mas masarap po kayo pakinggan when you speak Tagalog. Ah, Kuya Bert pala ang ating uh, si Mr. Peters, ang tawag sa kanya. Adam 
Jesus Bering. Good morning, Lauren Legarda. God bless you. What you're doing for good for the good of everyone. Thank you. Adam Jesus Bering, watching from Roja City. Oh, FCU. Rina Go of Nix. Masarap ang lahat ng luta. Luluto ni Rina Go. Ang tinatanong niya, how do we actually develop this? Where? Ay, makinig ka. So go to our Facebook page. We will put uh, Permaculture, Global Seed Savers, Dr. Kalub, and um, Carla Delgado, and um, Aberasturi uh, couple, and uh, we have uh, the Soil um, Green Space Pilipinas, and all of that. Rina, we'll talk later. Abigail Fiona Cruzada, could that and incorporate? Yes, it is incorporated in their learning standards. Yes, Dr. Kalub, correct? It is incorporated. And because under the Environmental Education Awareness Act, uh, it should not be just selected LGUs. It should be everybody because this is a law. Miss Marami pa eh. Sandali ah. One minute. <laughs> Michelle Dairit Fernandez, greetings from BF Homes Paranaque. Grace Flores Osorio, happy birthday Dr. Jabez Flores. Sana ay lumago ang permaculture sa ating bansa. I will make sure lalago ang permaculture kasi isa sa batas natin yan. Gagawa tayo. Uh, my circular economy uh, will be further strengthened with the, uh, with the um, provision of permaculture mapping and operationalization in every barangay. Fritz Hermoso Season, good morning Inday. Inday po ako sa Antique. I am excited once again in your webinar. Avid viewer and a practitioner, thank you. Mr. Peters, my dream come alive. Oh, and daming permaculture dreamers, very good, come to me in. Bertrand Aldo Santillan from Tarlac City. Wow, very good, congratulations to my outstanding classmate, Sir Jebes, Sir Kapala Jebes. Rina Go, sana daw may training sa backyard. So mag-upload tayo sa Facebook ng mga actual training sa backyard. Kung paano mag-composting yan, yung Bokashi, may two minutes tayo, pero i-upload natin yan sa Facebook. Tapos, dapat, ma yung mga farms natin sa Isabela man, sa Silang Cavite man, kung saan, sa maliliit na mga bahay, ay meron tayong how-to Diba? Hindi lang art cards, hindi lang talk, but we will have a permaculture 101 at ito ay video. Leo Acosta Donoso, watching from Los Baños. Edwin Lugo uh, from Katipunan Campus of JRMSU. Orina Go, very good. You're saying, how do we attract the birds? What is the ratio food to brand? Oh, how do we attract birds? Um, by having uh, flowers that pollinate, right? Uh, having um, uh, gumamela and all the flowers that are colorful and um, uh, having a clean environment, yes. Jobert Korkamp, I think. Uh, oh, sabi, confused now with brand and brand? No, I think it's clear it's a Bokashi brand, right? B-R-A-N, right? There's no confusion. Richard Burton, ikaw ba ito? Saan po makabili ng Bokashi? Ginagawa yan. Okay, we will upload it as well on Facebook. S.P. Ramirez, God bless Antique. Kit, very good. Kit Ian Masusi, plant-based food. Tama kayo. Bong C. Escano from Playa Patnongon. Ay, kamusta kayo? Jason Vicente, very interesting topic and informative topic. Salamat. Joy Denaco, interesting topic. What are the types of food waste and pwede pong ilagay sa Bukashi? Can you answer that briefly? Um, sa Bukashi, uh, kahit po ang bones ba, pwede daw? Ano ba ang yes. food preparation uh, bago ilagay? Yes. Yes, pwede. pwede. no? Yes, pwede. Any food waste. Any Correct. food waste. Yes. Any food waste. Very good. And we will upload a video that you uh, should have presented earlier because we're one hour and a half on mm -hmm. our Facebook page. Yes. Jen Horn, you can learn more about Bukashi composting or source compost buckets. Uh, and Bokashi brand from the Green Space Pilipinas. Fritz Hermoso Season, maraming salamat, Madam Lawrence, sa pagpaunawa sa amin ng mga bagay na maari pa naming magawa para makabahagi sa malawakang problema sa ekolohiya. My favorite, Attorney Yoli Doblon. Sabi niya, this is a very informative program. Matagal na kaming uh, hindi lang gumagawa ng batas at gumagawa ng national budget ni Director Irene at the Attorney Yoli Doblon 
maraming taon, kundi kami rin ay nagbabackyard farming sa aming maliliit na lugar. Hi, Attorney Yoli, miss ko na kayo. Says Villahermosa, we need it to promote it in barangays. Yes, we will make it a law. Global Seed Savers, learn about Global Seed Savers at www.globalseedsavers.org. Ron Oil Romero, watching in Harbor City, Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. To all Filipinos and non-Filipinos in Canada, share your best practices in permaculture, in agroecology, etc. J. Bass, glad to see the environmental and agriculture and networks converging here. Nemia Marie Atutubo, good morning everyone and God bless us all with good seeds to plant and harvest soon. Thanks be to God. Joey Myra, what is wet processing with fermentation? Uh, could we explain that again, Rina? Uh, how is it done? Is that not what you explained earlier? So we will put that on Facebook since it's a long process. Eric Matienzo from Pila Laguna. And Ibuna Pastrana. Napakaganda po nito pag mas maraming matuto, magawa. Kasama nyo po ang fast cut sa pagkalat nito sa Pilipinas. Yung mga video natin and all the, all the programs of stories were a better normal. I asked my staff who are with me now to share it with Chet and Marianne Pastrana who also have a farm in Mindoro and they can show it in their monitors in Pasca para yung mga nagkikriss-cross ng ating napakagandang mga isla sa Pilipinas pag uwi nila sa kanilang mga barangay sa ilalim ng ating libre uli antike or maski hindi antike sa balik probinsya ay magtabi ng mga seeds, mag soil composting at patupad ang permakultura at ang organic agriculture. Marami pa. Oy, wait a minute. Okay. So, um, huh. Roberto Bahenting, magkano po ang cost ng inputs and preparation of bokashi? Don't you do an aerobic digester for kitchen food waste mixed with plant crop residues, including animal waste? This process produces renewable energy, etc. Um, so all of these questions, um, can we connect him with you since medyo mahaba ito? Rina, can you yeah. connect with Mr. Roberto through my staff? He is um, uh, yes. from, uh, let me see, he has questions. I learned this process when we trained on household uh, biogas digester at the Asia Pacific Biogas Research in Chengdu City. So uh, he studied in, Chen, in, in Chengdu in Sichuan province. And perhaps we could connect you, Rina Patio. Yep. Yes, and please. And Dave North Helfer. Thank you, Dr. Kalub. Very inspiring. Looks like you have a fan here, Dr. Kalub. Uh, Michelle Dairik Fernandez. Will someone be compiling a list, yes, of all the resource speakers and their preferred contact information? Thank you very much. Hello from BF Homes. Yes, I ask my staff, not just this show, but all the webinars we've had of Stories for a Better Normal, we upload it on Facebook of Kong Lauren Legarda and Indai Lauren. We upload it on the Climate Change Commission, Commission Facebook page, on my YouTube channel, as well as all the resource persons in the respective online platforms. At the same time, we do... Uh, if they don't have a time to watch the one hour, one hour and a half, episode one, the topic, and we put the contact information so it's easy to navigate, okay? I hope Tala and Sherry are watching and um, Com Manny de Guzman and Com Rachel and uh, Victoria. Okay, Michelle de Rip, uh, Fernandez, yes, uh, your answer is we will be compiling. Sol Villanueva, congrats to all. Thanks for the wonderful lectures. Oh, Rina Go, please post the laws. Yes, after this, post all my laws, not just the titles, but every provision in the law on both my uh, pages. Okay, Tala knows that. Um, Jeffrey Sotero, Congresswoman Legarda, is a seed saver. Matagal na po. Ako po'y taga ipon ng buto, taga ipon ng tubig ulan, taga ipon po ng uh, food waste. <laughs> Kaya ako po ginawang batas yan noong 1998, um, yung aking ginawa ng aking pagkabata hanggang sa midlife ay um, ginawa ko pong batas. Yes, Sue, I have to wear glasses. <laughs> Sue Guadania, please do more of this. I'm 
into container gardening, very good, urban farming in Iloilo City, and soon we'll start seed saving. So, Sue Gadania, Gadania, we connect you with the global seed savers, okay? So, we will post this and all the contacts of everyone. Um, and um, they want to start permaculture. So, Bert Peters and, um, and uh, Jay Bess, please contact them in our Gimaras property. We want more of these webinars and actual and Spring Paulino. Thank you, Honorable Legarda. Thank you for all the hard work you do. The rest of the advocates and speakers, shout out to the global seed savers. Hope we also educate our farmers not to sell their farmland. Stay safe from Cebu. Stay safe. Cebu, please, please stay home. To sell Planilia from BGC Tagig, where can we buy permaculture soil? You do it. Buy segregating your waste and putting your food waste in a compost pit by putting the dry leaves and twigs together with your food waste then you do your own compost you don't have to buy the soil you regenerate and you do your own soil that's what i've been doing for decades so oh time check once again <laughs> it's 11 35 and i thank all of you for joining us uh, our friends from UP Los Banos, uh, Carla from Palawan, and uh, Attorney Paula uh, of Down to Earth, uh, Mr. Peters from Nueva Ecija, um, Rina Papio, and uh, Dr. Kalob, and uh, Miss Pizola, and uh, Dr. Flores from UP Los Banos. Did I miss anyone? No, everybody had a chance to speak. Uh, thank you for your presentations. Can we also ask you additional homework to do more than art cards? Can you please do, sige na, you'll do it, uh, three minutes. Three minutes of video, easy to understand. No need voice para i-upload po natin sa aking Facebook page and in your Facebook page because people need video. We have the Bokashi composting. We will post that on my Facebook page and we will ask the seed savers to do that. We will ask um, Dr. Khaled to do that. We will ask the mappers of biodiversity um, of our doctoral student to do that. We will ask uh, Mr. Peters to do that. Pasensya um, na, when you're a guest of Laura Negarda, may homework kayo. And after this, we will schedule a technical working group with the Climate Change Commission with Vice Chair Manny de Guzman and Commissioner uh, Rachel and Beck uh, as well as the climate reality and uh, Sonia Mendoza as well and Tala and Sheree and Rose, my staff, so that we can actually pilot Antique in the 18 local governments to be a permaculture center of Western Visayas and the Philippines. I see that you had spots uh, around the Philippines. I'm offering my whole province where the mountains meet the sea, which is uh, populated by fisher folks and farmers. So we have a uh, very, very uh, rich soil and a rich culture. And it would be a great model and prototype for other provinces to follow to be a permaculture center in the Visayas and in the Philippines. We will continue to work together. We will legislate everything that we talked about. The dream of every resource person today is that we will immortalize the work that they're doing in their little corners of the world. As always, one hour is never enough. One hour becomes, becomes one hour, 45 minutes. But it's hours and man hours of sharing our laws, sharing the policies, sharing the work of people in the provinces, of experts and scientists and advocates. And so the energy is simply positive. Importante po, plant, 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 sabi nga ng Department of Agriculture. Kaya, yung mga nanunood sa atin sa Facebook, libre po yung mga butong binibigay ko, libre din po ang mga binibigay po ng Department of Agriculture, Agricultural Training Institute, who's also a partner for their training kits. Namigay po tayo ng bisikleta sa ating sustainable mobility na webinar. Mamibigay po tayo ngayon seedlings, seeds, at saka starter kits. Pero pakita po ninyo kung paano. Nandito ba yung mga kamatis galing sa Germany? 
pwede natin i-flash. Alam mo, may konti ang storya na si Carol Malasig, isang Filipina Danish journalist na diplomatic wife na katira sa Germany, never pa siya nagtanim sa buong buhay niya in her millennial years. Pero pinilit ko na sumali sa ating webinar at nagtanim siya ng kamatis. At ngayon ay buhay na buhay, kinakain po niya. Uh, I don't know if you have the picture. Who do we have? Oh yeah, no, see? Okay, imagine for a person who has never planted anything before or at least tried to plant, wala daw na buhay. Kagabi hanggang madaling araw dahil sa ating time difference with Europe, katext ko siya um, at pinakita niya, kinakain nilang mag-asawa na consul sa ating Philippine Embassy, ang mga kamatis, mas magaling pa siya magbuhay ng kamatis kaysa sa akin ngayon. Kaya magpapaturo ako kay Carol na siyang tinuruan ko na mag-urban gardening. Siya rin ang nagbigay sa atin ng ideya magkaroon ng Klein Garden sa isang communal space para sa pagtatanim ng ating gulay. Thank you very much. Carol Malasig at yung ating mga DA Starter Kits ay mamimigay din tayo. Sana marami pang kamukha ni Carol na makakabuhay ng halaman na nagbibigay buhay sa atin. Attorney Ipat Luna, I'd like to give you 30 seconds. Are you with us now from Taal Lake? Dahil uh, ikaw, I'm in Quezon City, na... unfortunately. Ah, okay. Ma Nasa Quezon City ka. I can see your office. Sige, kala ko pa naman nandiyan yung bamboo house mo. Kasi si Ipat din, ang aking um, kausap palagi pag kami ay uh, nag-identify ng mga bulaklak ng ibon at pati paru-paro. Would you believe? Hanggang 12 midnight, ang aming pinag-uusapan ni Ipat. Ano, Ipat? Buto? Hindi ba? <laughs> Buto at ibon? Di ba, Buto, Ipat? ibon, paru-paro. Ayun. Kami, yan ang conversation namin ni Ipat. Buto, ibon, paru-paro. So, Ipat, um, just your takeaway from all of this, uh, I give you a few minutes even if we are over time. Our expert on biodiversity, Attorney Ipat Luna. Maraming salamat, Deputy Speaker. Gusto ko lang sabihin kasi sa lahat na napakadali lang ito. Uh, huwag tayong mag-isip na may isang malaking pagbabago sa buong buhay natin para magawa ito. Uh, basta yung nasa kusina, tandaan lang yung dati na may kaning baboy, may lalagyan ng kaning baboy doon dati. So, ibalik lang natin yon. tapos yun yung ilalagay sa bokasyo or sa compost pit. Hindi na po yan mahirap at malaki ang pakinabang nang sino mang gagawa niyan. Uh, nakikiusap na po kami kasi nung red ako ng Calabar Zone, mga 36%, 38% lang ang kaya ng mga landfills. Ibig sabihin po niyan, halos lahat ng ibang basura ay hindi kayang ilagay dun sa legal natin na landfills. Kung babawasin natin yung nabubulok sa ganun, 50% kaagad ang mababawasan dun sa ilalagay natin sa landfills na napakamahal din naman ng construction. So as your patriotic duty, kung mahal niyo po ang bayan at mahal niyo ang inyong kinalalagyang lugar, inihikayat na po talaga kayo kung maaari lang, huwag na po natin pakawalan sa bahay natin ang lahat ng nabubulok na bagay. Maraming salamat po. Very good, Ipat. Actually, labag po sa batas na ginawa ko noong 2001 ang pagkolekta ng pagkain at ng lahat ng dry leaves Dahil yan po ay dapat linalagay sa compost pit. Dapat ang kinokolekta lang po ng garbage collector ay yung residual or lata na hindi kayang iresikulo. Kaya salamat sa passion mo at sa pagpapaalala mo, Attorney Ipat Luna. Yung ating mga uh, Bokashi video composting at yung mga video natin na sinare sa akin ng aking kaibigan si Ria Benedicto Villavicencio, tungkol sa pagtutubig ng halaman maski wala kay sa bahay, ipopost natin sa ating Facebook page. At lahat po ng email address at ng mga online uh, messages na pwede ibigay sa ating panel of experts today ay ilalagay po natin sa ating Facebook page. So, thank you to all our Facebook friends. Uh, we don't say goodbye because um, we are on Facebook. Share and share and share. Plant and plant and plant. Compost and compost and compost. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for sharing. That's the way to learn. That's the way to go in this day of pandemic and beyond. I wish you all a good day. God bless you. Keep safe. Salamat. Isang lunti ang Pilipinas sa ating lahat. Thank you.